welcome back dear students so today we will discuss uh, one of the chemical methods for transferring this biomass especially the oil seeds animal fat etc into biodiesel that is trans esterification so what is trans esterification so it is the process of converting triglyceride oils so we have triglyceride group an organic group in oils including plant oils and animal fats etc and even recycled oil the grease etc contain this triglyceride group so we are converting this triglyceride oils with the help of an alcohol mostly methanol or sometimes ethanol to alkyl esters fatty acid alkyl esters so these are known as biodiesel and we will also get glycerin or glycerol as a by product of this process but this reaction requires a strong heat and a base catalyst so a catalyst is very much essential so mostly we can use sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide etc and a little bit of heating also required in this process so this is the reaction takes place we have the plant oil is shown in the reactant which is reacting with methanol in the presence of catalyst it is converted to fatty acid methyl ester that is the mostly we call it as biodiesel and glycerol or glycerin so what is biodiesel by the stm international defines biodiesel as a mixture of long chain monoalkylic esters from fatty acids obtained from renewable source so any monoalkylic esters obtained from the renewable source which can be used which is able to use in a diesel engine alone or a blended with diesel is known as a biodiesel so if you are obtaining any alkyl ester from a renewable resource and if you are able to run it with a diesel engine either completely alone with that or mixing with conventional diesel we call it as a biodiesel and mostly we are representing a biodiesel by b10 bx bx where x letter x is the percentage of biodiesel in the blend so for example if you have b10 biodiesel that means only 10 percentage is biodiesel the remaining 90 percent is mixed with conventional diesel so like that we are representing the percentage as bx now this is the typical uh, biodiesel production cycle first the oil crops actually the energy from sun itself is stored as these oil seeds which is extracted through proper method and converted into crude vegetable oil which is further refined for a refined vegetable oil which then that refined vegetable oil undergoes trans esterification by alcohol and we are getting biodiesel plus glycerin this biodiesel we can able to use in uh, engines either directly or mix with diesel the glycerol also is a good product used for different application industry cosmetic uh, food etc so this is a typical biodiesel cycle now what are the methods for production of bio oil from oil seeds so according to the how we are producing this oil from this oil seeds and how we are using this extraction we are classifying into uh, four categories that is we have two conventional methods that is expeller press method and extractive solvent extraction method that is the two conventional methods we have so two advanced methods also that is one is ultrasonic assisted extraction and another one is supercritical fluid extractions so let us discuss one by one uh, what are these methods 
Now, this is a mostly conventional method or older method for extracting an oil from oil seed. So here what we are doing is a screw press. A screw is used, rotating screw, which press the seeds and nuts etc. through a cavity and use this intense pressure to extract oil. So this is a conventional method. We have a screw, rotating screw which will push this oil uh, seeds which are feeding to this hopper. You can see a hopper. So seed, nut etc. will be feeded in that hopper. And at that time the screw will be rotated and it will push press these seeds to a cavity and it, this action will extract the oil. And the heat is also generated because we are using high friction uh, we around 60 to 100 degrees Celsius uh, temperature will be increased by the action of the screw. And once these seeds are pressed, we will get oil in the bottom. And the remaining se the seeds uh, remained in that uh, screw press is known as an uh, oil cake. It is in the form of a hard brick, uh, which can be used for animal feeding, etc. But the problem with this method is uh, this brick like uh, remain of seeds also contains oil uh, 60 to 6 to sorry 6 to 14 percentage oil so that is not a perfect method for extracting oil because is the residue left behind this process will also contain some 6 to 14 percentage oil so that, that means its yield is very less and it's costly and we require more nuts and seeds for extracting oil because it's not able to extract complete oil in that so this is the drawback of this method and the another method is solvent extraction method what we are doing is we will use a solvent a low boiling point solvent like hexane the hexane is the mostly used solvent with the help of hexane we are we can extract the oil so this consists of our raw material will be treated with hexane and after that it will follow a distillation so in that distillation we will get the oil separately and the hexane separately so this is a small setup used for this solvent extraction method and the evaporation and condensation of this distillate we can separate the hexane and the oil this hexane thus recovered is used for further extraction and why we are choosing hexane is, is due to its low boiling point its boiling point is only 67 degrees celsius and it's also having the high solubility for oils and fats so these are properties uh, that we are going for hexane as a solvent in this method the solvent extraction method has the advantage of it leaves only 0.5 to 0.7 residual oil left after the raw material so in this method we can almost get 99 percentage oil from a seed or particular fat whereas in the previous method uh, th there were a lot of oils remains in the residue and we have another ultrasound assisted transferification so already we know ultrasound what is an ultrasound ultrasound is the sound of frequency higher than that human ear can respond or heard so it is above 20 kilohertz so human ear can heard around 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz sound frequency sound and above that we call it as ultrasound so we are using this ultrasound frequency in this particular process and why we are the advantage of using ultrasound assisted transesterification is we can increase the chemical reaction so various mechanisms 
that will affect chemical reaction will increase so why we are, there is an increase in chemical reaction when we are using ultrasound is due to this ultrasonic cavitation so what is ultrasonic cavitation is a formation and growth of explosive bubbles that will be formed so when we are passing ultrasound through a liquid there will be high amount of cavitation that is cavitation we already studied in fluid mechanics so formation and growth and destruction of bubbles in a low when the pressure changes so that will happen because ultrasound means sound wave itself is a wave which having a high pressure region continuous low pressure region so ultrasound means this effect will be more and this collapse of this cavitation bubbles will give rise to small eddies and the, there will be a high amount of mass and heat transfer so that is how we are able to increase the chemical reaction when we are using ultrasound assisted transistor vication so this is a typical uh, setup used for ultrasound assisted transistor vication we will have an ultrasonic generator and then a probe will be there this probe will be generating ultrasonic waves in our liquid or solvent where we are using this so that will increase the basically that will help to increase the chemical reactions and thereby yield will be more and another uh, modern method is supercritical method so what is a supercritical fluid this is this process can be carried out without any catalyst so normally biodiesel production is carried out with the help of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide catalyst but this supercritical method it can be achieved without any catalyst so here a supercritical fluid is used so what is a supercritical fluid we already know what is a critical point critical point of steam etc we have studied so that is the term point or state at which its latent heat becomes zero or that means it without it will suddenly change from liquid to vapor state without much effect so that is the critical point and above that we call it as a supercritical region so any fluid which is above its critical temperature and pressure we call it as supercritical fluid and it can diffuse through solids like a gas and at the same time it can dissolve materials like a liquid so that is the importance of supercritical region it exhibits some characteristics of gas at the same time it will have the dissolving ability of a liquid also and generally we can use uh, supercritical ethanol but sometimes mostly we are using carbon dioxide also in supercritical states so these are some substances we are using in supercritical states and the main factors that will affect transesterification via supercritical process are temperature pressure and molar ratio between this alcohol and oil sample and this is a typical block diagram of that so we require a high pressure pump because we have to increase the pressure beyond critical point of that liquid so we have to use high pressure pump then our oil and alcohol will be fed into that and it will reach a super critical re uh, stage after that we will pass some heat also and the condenser will be there so after that we will separate this biodiesel and the uh, alcohol and the advantage of supercritical process are is shorter reaction time easier purification of products etc but obviously it is having a very high cost and energy consumption also very high because we have to increase the pressure to high value so energy consumption is less and then excess amount of alcohol is also used so these are some disadvantage of this method so these are the modern methods of transesterification one is ultrasound assisted transesterification and another one is supercritical 
transfer certification and for heating we are heating uh, this specimen with the help of some external supply but if you are using microwave heat assisted heating we call it as another transfer certification that is microwave assisted transfer certification so microwaves can be used for heating the raw material in biodiesel production and already we know what is microwaves microwaves uh, uh, wavelength is a uh, higher wave a shorter frequency wavelength a microwaves uh, very near to infrared waves and they represents a non ionizing radiations so comparing to ultraviolet and other radiations this microwaves are non ionizing type radiations but it can influence the molecular motion and already we know the oil uh, we are using in transfer certification methanol catalyst all these uh, contains polar and ionic components so microwaves when you are passing this to this uh, components they can activate a degree of polar variations leading to molecular friction and that will increase the chemical reaction and produce some heat etc and since it this molecular level interaction is happening we can have a very efficient and rapid heating so compared to other external heating so mostly we will be using some external heating for biodiesel production but if we are using microwaves it will have a efficient and rapid heating can happen then this is a typical figure of the microwave assisted transfer certification so oil alcohol and catalyst are fed into a, a particular uh, burette and can be kept in a microwave oven and if you are reaching a required temperature after that we can take it out and separate the products but the problem with this is a drastic reduction in the quantity of by products and short separation time are obtained okay it is having a very high yield the yield is very high because the temperature we can be very short time we can reach a very high temperature but the problem is these are not scalable so these are the, the problem with any microwave process uh, this microwave process it can happen in pyrolysis also so and other thermochemical conversions we are using microwaves but the problem with the microwave assisted process is its scalability so we cannot increase this for a huge capacity we can use only this type of heating for some laboratory scale setup but for industrial production these are not advisable because its cost and uh, practicality will stop this type of transfer certification to a industrial production so that is the main drawback of this uh, microwave assisted transfer certification and what are the different steps for biodiesel production already we know transfer certification is the main process in biodiesel production but other than that we have the following steps first one is known as the acid esterification it is a pre treatment before transfer certification we call it as acid esterification then comes our transfer certification the main step in biodiesel production then methanol recovery biodiesel refining and glycerin refining so these are the few steps we have to take care in biodiesel production now what is acid esterification it is a pre treatment step before transfer certification so we have some free fatty acids in certain biodiesel feed stocks and they will react this fatty acids are present if in an oil or in an animal fat they will react with the alkali catalyst we are using sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide as as catalyst and the, they will react with this catalyst and form soaps uh, similar to our detergent soap and this will reduce the properties of biodiesel produced so that is a problem with the fatty acids so if fatty acids are present in the feed stocks 
they will react with the catalyst is a base catalyst so acid and base will react and will form this uh, salt that is known as soap and that will reduce the properties of oil so that will affect the uh, reaction also because a catalyst means it does not have to take part in a reaction but if it is fatty acids are present it will consume the catalyst also and at the same time it will result in soap generation and low level of this free fatty acids that is up to 4 percentage can be managed by using some additional catalysts and allowing soap formation so if, if the in our feed stock the, uh, up to 4 percentage fatty acids are present uh, we can allow that and with some additional catalyst we can give but if our feed stock contain more than 4 percentage of fatty acids the particularly animal fats and recycled grease so they have to be first filtered and processed with process to remove water and other contaminants and they have to be this pre-treated oil has to be fed to acid esterification so that is the main thing if you are acid esterification is not required for uh, all the feed stocks but particularly for animal fats Suppose we are using some chicken waste or some other animal fats or uh, you recycled grease or used uh, oils etc. They will have this high amount of free fatty acids. So that is a chance of more uh, this soap production. So we have to remove that. So for that first we have to filter all other uh, contaminants and remove water after that. It has to be treated treated with acid esterification for this we are using sulfuric acid sulfuric acid is dissolved in methanol and mixed with this pre-treated oil and the mixture is heated and stirred and the fatty acids can be converted to biodiesel so sulfuric acid is used for this acid esterification and once the reaction is completed it can be dewatered and water can be again removed and fed to the transesterification process and already we have discussed transesterification what are these reaction etc so after the first step that is a pretreatment that is acid esterification the oil is fed directly to the transesterification process and catalyst via potassium hydroxide sodium extra extra are used they are dissolved in methanol so methanol is another reactant so normally these catalysts are dissolved in methanol and then they are mixed with the pre-treated oil we can also use some heterogeneous catalysts like cerium oxide some other compounds etc also we can use and if acid esterification process is used the additional alkaline catalyst must be added to neutralize any excess acid remaining from that step so if we are using this acid esterification also we have to give some additional catalyst and once the reaction is completed uh, that is after heating and after giving some time it's we can reduce re re majorly we have two products that is biodiesel and glycerin they can be separated in two layers and the main factors that will affect transesterification process it's well, first one is obviously is reaction temperature time what is the reaction time we are giving for that particular reaction and another one is the alcohol to oil mole ratio what is the percentage of mole of alcohol to mole of oil then catalyst concentration free fatty acid content then how mixing so mixing is also very important we have to be mix it properly this oil and this uh, uh, this uh, cap base etc has to be mixed perfectly and the water content also will affect and we are using alcohol so what type of alcohol whether it is methanol ethanol that will affect the performance also and catalyst type so these are the overall factors that are going to affect the transesterification process then after this we have this methanol recovery so we have to recover the methanol the methanol is usually removed immediately 
after this process and this is to done prevent the reaction from reversing itself so some methanol will be remained without take part in the reaction so if we have to remove that once after the reaction is completed otherwise this reverse reaction will happen itself so that is why we are to be methanol recovery we are to recover the methanol so recovered methanol can be again used if required so we have obtained two products one is biodiesel and another one is glycerol or glycerin so this biodiesel has to be refined so once separated from glycerin the biodiesel has to be refined and this contains some multi stage washing so we have to clean water is used for this cleaning of this so like that we can have this biodiesel refining so biodiesel refining means you have to contain a multi stage process so we can further study that then similarly the glycerin also it can takes part in refining the crude glycerin from transformation process that can be the one application of glycerin is it can be used as a boiler fuel mix with boiler fuel we can use glycerin for heating in boiler and this crude glycerin we have to refine that to obtain so normally the crude glycerin will have some 15 to 80 percentage glycerin and remaining will be alcohol and water etc so that in large biodiesel plants we have to further purify this glycerin to 90 percentage then we can use in cosmetics etc then one question arises is why we are not use this plant oil or animal fat directly into diesel engine why you are producing biodiesel so many steps and we see we have so many complications so why can't we directly use this vegetable oils like uh, coconut oil or palm oil or animal fat directly into the engine the main problem is their property so plant oil animal fat etc are more viscous that is it is more thicker than conventional diesel and it's approximately 11 to 17 percentage more thicker so its viscosity is uh, 10 times and more or more thick higher than the conventional diesel so that is will be cause a very big problem and its pro chemical properties combustion characteristics etc are very very different from conventional diesel fuel and we know if the fuel used in an engine is very very too we highly viscous we will not be able to atomize it with the help of a fuel injector so combustion will not be proper so we know in diesel engine how combustion takes place we have a diesel injector it will inject the diesel with very high pressure into the combustion chamber and this atomization and mixing of air will takes place and but if you are using this plant oils and fat directly due to this high viscosity it we will not be able to atomize it so the combustion will not be proper and ultimately the injector will cocked up that is it will blocked and it will lead to the pure performance and high exhaust emission and obviously the engine life will be reduced so these are the problems associated with if you are directly using this plant oils and animal fats in a diesel engine and that is why we have to adopt transesterification transesterification improve the quality of this plant oils etc so we are converting this plant oil into biodiesel its properties will be a uh, somewhat near to the conventional diesel now what are the properties of biodiesel that is very we have to check so we have to first measure this property so suppose we have produced the biodiesel from a particular feed stocks through transesterification but it we can't directly apply that biodiesel to an engine it may lead to several problems first we have to check the property so what are the properties we have to consider after producing biodiesel 
the first one is is density so density we know what is density how to measure density is mass by volume so we know the diesel density is around uh, 875 uh, that range uh, 875 uh, kilogram per meter cube or gram per cc so we have to be very near to that value our biodiesel and obviously viscosity is a measure of the fluids resistance flow and we know how we are measuring viscosity with the help of some viscometers a redwood door some viscometers where we are measuring the time taken for a particular oil to pass through an orifice and we have some equations so after do the do proper measurement of viscosity is also very much essential in this uh, biodiesel then another important property is the cloud point so what is a cloud point cloud point is defined as the temperature at which a cloud is formed a cloud means a crystal like wax crystal like structure appears in the fuel so if you are uh, reducing temperature of our fuel at a particular period of time a wax crystals will be formed so that will have some problems so if that crystal is formed in the operating range it will be eventually block the fuel system of diesel so we have to take care of that cloud point and another one is pour point so pour point of liquid is a temperature below which the liquid loss its flow characteristics so its ability to flow will be stopped in this uh, pour point below beyond that so it is the minimum temperature at which the oil is having the ability to pour down so that is also important see if our pour point is uh, very far away comparing to our diesel uh, it will have some trouble in the fuel supply and CT number it's important property in terms of diesel it represents the knocking tendency of a diesel for petrol engine we have octane number similarly in diesel we have the CT number it is a measure of the interval between beginning of injection and auto ignition because knocking is highly depending on this auto ignition so it's actually a measure of the time between beginning of injection and auto ignition and higher the CT number is delay period will be shorter and it will have greater combustibility so higher CT number is always advisable because it improves the combustibility and uh, reduce the knocking tendency and we already know all this we have studied CT number is we are using two reference fuel one is CT which is having given as CT number of 100 and alpha methyl naphthalene which is having a CT number of 0 so CT number means it is the percentage by volume of CT in a mixture of CT and alpha methyl naphthalene that will give the same ignition lag of our uh, biodiesel or our rough test fuel so if the CT number of our biodiesel is 75 means it is having the same ignition lag of 75 percentage is C10 and 25 percentage alpha methyl naphthalene so that is the importance of C10 number then we have a flash point flash point is the lowest temperature at which a volatile substance will evaporate to form an ignitable mixture with air so flash point is not that much important in diesel it is very very important in petrol because petrol is spark ignition this flash point is very very important but diesel it's not that much important but this uh, mean some minimum flash point are required for proper safety and handling of fuel so if the handling and storage of fuel we have require some flash point and obviously the heating value how much heat is to be generated by burning a unit mass of fuel it depends on the chemical conversion and content of carbon hydrogen etc so all these things we know so th these are the properties uh, that has to be taken care of after producing biodiesel and this is a typical comparison of uh, properties first one we have a conventional diesel its values are given 
then if you are directly using soya bean oil its property also are given and what will be the property of biodiesel extracted from soya bean oil similarly one another oil that is babazu oil its property is also given and biodiesel obtained from babazu oil so mainly you can notice the viscosity so if you look at the first row that is a kinematic viscosity diesel it is around 3.06 but you look at soya bean it's around 32 similarly babazu oil also is 30.3 so very very viscous than diesel so we cannot directly use this type of plant oil in diesel engine but if we are using transesterification and converting this oil into biodiesel we can see it's reduced to 4.5 and 3.6 so that is the advantage of this transesterification we are reducing the viscosity and it is very much near to the biodiesel and these conventional diesel compare similarly CTA number also improved so if you are using soya bean oil directly its CTA number is only 37.9 but if you are producing biodiesel it's increased to 45 so that is the advantage and similarly other properties also we can see some improvements are there and flash point also there is a very huge deviation if you are directly using soya bean oil its flash point is very very high 254 so that we can reduce to some 178 degrees so like that we can improve the property of these oils by applying transesterification that is the importance of this transesterification so with this we are stopping this session and we will continue in some other section. Thank you.